Welcome everybody, I'm Super Metal Bro, and today we're gonna learn how to route Get Good Drums in Reaper through Contact. The reason I decided to make this tutorial is because I had to go through eight or 10 different um, you know, tutorials on YouTube to finally figure everything out that I needed. It wasn't fun at all, and after all that I decided, you know what, I'm gonna make a one stop where everybody can go to finally figure out how to route these drums. Why is routing drums important anyway right it's actually important because when we plug in the uh the initial like vst or virtual instrument get good drums on our tracks and we start applying um effects to it then it affects every piece of the kit and that not, that's probably not what you want so that's why routing is important because it allows us to take those different channels and put them in channels in reaper so we can affect everything individually Hopefully that made sense. So I have a new track over here. The first thing we want to do, and this actually tripped me up a lot. You're going to want to uncheck master send channels from two right over here, right? And if you didn't see where I clicked that, I went down to route in my mixer down here and I unchecked it. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and add the effects. I clicked on the effects button on our track and we're going to go click on contact, right? So you're going to see contact. If you don't, Make sure, I'm going to close this real quick, you go to Options, Preferences, VST within this menu here, and you're going to edit your path list, add path, and then go to wherever your contact libraries are, okay? And then you click OK, you scan, you scan for new modified plugins, and bam, it should pick up contact, and then it should be accessible through your effects window in Reaper. So let's go ahead and close that. Um... Contact is already added here. Cool. So now that I have this up, I'm going to go ahead and click Modern and Massive. That's the GGD library that I have. And uh, cool. We're not going to hear, because we unchecked that master, you're not going to hear anything when you hit like the different symbols and snare and all that. And that's fine. That's totally exactly what you want, actually. So perfect. All right. So now that we have those kind of like done and ready, the first thing we want to do is um see if our outputs are visible mine are right now on the bottom as you can see here but if you're brand new to this they're probably not visible yet so you're gonna go ahead and click on this little box here it's made of like two rectangles and a box you're gonna click that and make sure outputs is checked if it's unchecked like i have right now you can just check it and bam then you see all of these you're probably only going to see like four or five different like channels here um so that's totally fine. You know, that's that's how it comes stock. I was messing with this earlier, so that's why I have a crap ton of channels. So what I'm going to do, um, so I can start in the same level as you guys, is I'm actually going to click plus on the outputs over here. And uh, this is actually good for anybody else who was experimenting with this before and couldn't quite figure it out. If you have a bunch of channels there and you want to erase them, just go ahead and go to delete existing channels before creating new ones, right? You're going to click that button. And we're going to make a certain amount of channels. I'm going to say, like, just for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to do, like, 10. <laughs> of course, I, I type in 12. <laughs> and then we're going to click OK. All right. And that's all you need to do there. So I have 10 channels. And then I have four auxiliary channels as well. Um, cool. So those are down there. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to name these channels. We're going to go ahead and we're going to type in uh, double click on the first guy right here. Click kick. I put snare. Top. <laughs> snare bottom. Snare overheads. Or snare OH. Snare rooms. Toms. Symbols. Uh, so cool. Now that we have those channels named, now um, we can actually go ahead and assign the channels, right? So to assign channels, you want to click on the bottom here. It has two slots because these are stereo channels. And that's important within contact. Apparently, it's not fun to work with mono channels uh, <laughs> from what I heard. So we're going to keep these stereo and they sound just fine in stereo. So we're going to click on the first channel here and we're going to click the first two in the menu so one and two so plug out plug in out one plug in out two okay 
so that's important there. And you're gonna get a, like a little like message. Don't worry about it. Just click OK. Okay. The next one is another the other one and two. So that will last show up as three and four for you guys. And this one will be five and six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, I believe this is eleven and twelve. Yep, yep, eleven and twelve. As you go down more and more, it gets a little bit more confusing. <laughs> Thirteen, fourteen, because you're kind of trying to. Like, tag in your head, like, you know, which channels are which. And uh, actually, that's all I want to do. So, yeah. So, these are our stereo channels here. So, now that we have that done, we're actually going to go up top on the uh, contact window. And right in this area here, you're going to see an exclamation point. That acts as a refresh for contact to tell it, hey, we have channels that we just made. Like, it didn't see what you did automatically. You know, you'd think it would see what you did. But nope, nope. No, contact be dumb dumb. Contact walk dumb gum. Anyway, we're going to click that and bam, now it's able to see. And now it knows that we have these channels lined up, right? And if we go to kick, you know, snare and toms or whatever, if you look on the bottom, like it has these channels now instead of the old default channels it had before. If you see anything else, uh, make sure that you assign these, put the channels on and click the um, exclamation point before you, you know, before you go, well, this isn't working, you know, just make sure you did that. So we're going to go ahead and assign the channels. So kick is already assigned to kick, so we don't have to do anything there. Snare. So snare top, we made a snare top section. So we'll, we'll put that snare top. We'll do snare bottom for the bottom. We're going to do uh snare OH. I'm just going to put the overheads on the same channel. Uh, for the rooms, I'm going to do the rooms on the same channel. Because we still do have the option of changing parameters within uh, contact itself. So it's pretty cool. And uh, another snare rooms. Okay. Then we're going to go to toms. And I'm just going to put everything under toms for the sake of time. So blah, blah, blah. Toms, toms. Tommy. Tom. Tom Hiddleston. The, Thomas the tank engine. There we go. So toms and symbols. So we've got that down. We've got everything, you know, in contact setup. Congratulations. Now we have to link it to Reaper. And it, it's not as bad of a process as you think. So we're going to go ahead and actually close this. Oh, actually, no, no. We're going to do one more thing first. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Freaking toss and turn. Freaking, like, I gotcha. <laughs> right now, there's Reaper only sees two tracks. It's not cool, right? Yeah, we want we want it to see more tracks so we can plug in these outputs into that right there. So what you want to do is click this 240 out area. And uh, like right now, we're occupying like what, like seven channels, 14. I don't know. I'm just going to add like 24 channels. I don't care. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> just, you know, the more the better, right? Uh, and then we're going to click close. And there, now we have the 24 out of 50 out. And we're going to close that up. And now the next thing we actually want to do is we want to create more tracks, right? Remember, we created seven tracks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Or was it eight? I don't remember. I'll create an extra track anyway. So this contact track right here, um, I'm going to name it Drum MIDI because that's if you have any MIDI. That's really where you'll want to put it in. Uh, now, I actually have pre-made MIDI, so I'm just going to go ahead and just paste it right in here. But, like, if you have any MIDI files that you want to throw in there, now could be the time if you want to, to kind of test things. So, um, now that we have all these tracks here and the drum MIDI, what we want to do is we want to have sends for all the tracks here. Uh, but the tracks are blank. Like, they're like, what do we name them, right? That's probably what you're asking. Ah, good question. So we're going to name them exactly what we named them in contact. So I'm going to name them kick, snare top, snare bottom, 
Snare Bootin. Uh Snare overheads. Snare rooms. Toms. Um Symbols? Is it symbols? Yeah. I don't know why I forgot that. And then, yeah, I'm just gonna delete this track here. So remove track. Bam! So we have those all set up, ready. Uh well, named at least. Now we're actually gonna do sends. So um what we can do is we can actually go to the routing button all the way down on our drum MIDI or where the uh your track is with the uh with the uh, instrument. And we're actually gonna add new sends, right? Okay, so I'm just gonna add one for kick, one for snare top, one for snare bottom, one for snare overheads, one for rooms, one for toms, and one for cymbals. Perfect. Next, what we're gonna do, remember those stereo channels that we added, you know, before, like the little numbers? We actually have to match those to Reapers, okay? So for kick, they're in channels one and two. So it's already there. We don't have to do anything with it. Snare top is three and four. So we're going to change that to, you guessed it, three and four, baby. Let's go. Now, if you see here, um, if you go to the channels, you know, it, it says three and four, right? We assigned it there. And you're probably, you might be asking, why didn't we use two and three? Well, if you go one, two, then two, three, then three, four, then four, five on these channels, it start, they mix channels. Like, I don't want my, I don't necessarily want my snare top second channel to be mixed with the second channel on the kick. So that's why I'm making individual channels for all of these. All right, so they have all of those set up to their different channels. And now that we have those set up, we should be able to hear them. So go ahead and just bring your playhead, you know, your green little playhead thing all the way to the beginning of your drum mini that you might have made. Or you could just like go to the kit in Reaper itself and see how they're playing on different channels on the bottom here. They're not all playing through the same channel anymore. So, see, Tom came out with the Toms are coming out through the Toms channel. And they are actually coming out a little bit through the snare top and bottom channels too, because of an effect of an effect called microphone bleed. So the microphone that's on the actual snare itself picks up on the toms just a little bit. That's just a thing that happens in real life. Um, from what I understand, some people try to take the bleed out completely. Some people don't. Uh, some people argue that if you take out the bleed from other drums in the room completely, that it makes it sound unrealistic. Do whatever you want to do, like I said. that's a That's an important thing to do in music production. You don't you know it, that's how we get different sounds and that's how we get you know things that are different you know there's too much stagnation in the same thing in uh in music nowadays so you know do what you think sounds cool anywho um yeah we have different tracks going through different symbols now and if you see the drum midi uh channel area you'll see the different channels in here as well right so um i'll close that to get just a better view. Um, see, they're just dancing around. So perfect. Now, like, we can do things like uh, add some compression to the kick. Uh, put in like a quick, like, 3A. See, when I bypass, you don't really hear the compression as much. When I unbypass it like that, it's got more of an attack. Bam. So, yeah. Um, now we can apply different things to different pieces on the kit. That is freaking awesome. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> um, I tried to keep the tutorial short, but there were so many things I wanted to go over. So, I mean, I'm sorry, I guess. Uh, thanks for... Uh, making it to this point and uh, dealing with my weird sense of humor. Um, everybody make great music out there. Have fun. You know, do your thing. Don't forget about that. It's about the music you want to create. All right. See ya.